Luke chapter 21 The widow's offering While Jesus was in the temple, he watched the rich people dropping their gift in the collection box. Then a poor widow came by and dropped in two small coins. I tell you the truth, Jesus said, this poor widow has given more than all the rest of them. For they have given a tiny part of their surplus, but she, poor as she is, has given everything she has. Jesus speaks about the future. Some of his, some of his disciples began talking about the majestic stonework of the temple and the memorial decorations on the walls. But Jesus said, the time is coming when all these things will be completely demolished. Not one stone will be left on the top of another. Teacher, they ask, when will all this happen? A sign will show us that these things are about to take place. He replied, don't let anyone mislead you. Many for many will come in my name, claiming I am the Messiah, and saying, The time has come, but don't believe them. And when you hear of wars and insurrections, don't panic. Yes, these things must take place first, but the end on to follow immediately. Then he added, Nation will go to war against the nation and kingdom against the kingdom. There will be great earthquakes and there will be fames and plagues in many lands. And there will be terrifying things and great miraculous signs from heaven. But, be but before all this occurs, there will be a time of great persecution persecution, you will be dragged into synagogues and prisons, and you will stand the trial before kings and governors because you are my followers. But this will be your opportunity to tell them about me, so don't worry in advance about how to answer to charges against you, for I will give you the right words and such a wisdom that none of your op opponents will be available to reply or repute, refute you. Even those closest to you, your parents, brothers, relatives, and friends will betray you. They will even kill some of you. And everyone will hate you because you are my followers. But now a hair of your head will perish. By standing firm, you will win your souls. And when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then you will know that time of its destruction are arrived. Then those in Judea must Judea must flee to the hills. Those in Jerusalem must get out, and those out in the country should not return to the city. For those will be days of God's vengeance and prophetic words of the scriptures will be fulfilled. How terrible it will be for pregnant women and for nursing mothers in those days. There will be disaster in the land and great anger against these people. They will be killed by the sword or sent away as cap captives to all the nations of the world. And Jerusalem will be trampled, trampled down by the Gentiles until the period of the gentle comes to the end. And there will be strange sign in the sun, moon, and stars, and here on earth, the nation will be in turmoil, perplexed, 
by the roaring seas and strange tides. People will be People will be terrified that what they see coming up the earth, for the powers in heavens will be shaken, that everyone will see the Son of Man coming on a cloud with power and great glory. So when all these things begin to happen, stand and look up, for your salvation is near. Then he gave them this illustration not is the fig tree or any other tree when the leaves come out you know without being told that summer is near in the same way when you see all these things taking place you can know that the kingdom of God is near I tell you the truth this generation will not pass from the scene until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will disappear, but my words will never dis disappear. But child, don't let your heart be bowed, be dulled by carousing and drunkenness, and by the worries of this life. Don't let that day catch you unaware, like a trap. For that day will come up everyone living on the earth. Keep, all, keep alert, alert at the all time and pray that you might be strong enough to escape these coming horrors and stand before the Son of Man. Every day Jesus went to the te temple to teach and each evening the, he returned to spend night on the Mount of Olive. The crowds gathered at the temple early each morning to hear him. Chapter 22 Judas agreed to betray Jesus. The festival of un unleavened bread, which is also called Passover, was approaching. The leading priest and teacher of religion law were plotting how to kill Jesus, but they were prey to the people's reaction. The Satan entered into G Judah Gero, was one of the twelve disciples, and he went to the leading priests and captains of the temple guard to discuss the best way to betray Jesus to them. They were delighted, and they promised to give him money. So he agreed and began looking for an opportunity to betray Jesus so they could arrest him when the crowd weren't around. The Last Supper Now the festival of unleavened bread arrived. The Passover lamb is sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John ahead and said, Go and prepare the Passover meal so we can eat it together. Where do you want us to prepare it? They asked him. He replied, As soon as you enter Jerusalem, a man carrying a pitcher of water will meet you. Follow him. At the house he enters, say to owner. The teacher asked, Where is the guest room where I can eat the Passover meal with my disciples? He will take you upstairs to a large room that is already set up. That is where you should prepare our meal. They went off to the city and found everything just as Jesus had said. And they prepared the Passover meal there. When the time came, Jesus and the apostles sat down together at the table. Jesus said, I've been very eager to eat this Passover meal will, with you before my suffering begins. For I tell you now that I won't eat this meal again until its meaning is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he looked a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. Then he said, Take this and share it among yourselves. For I will 
not drink wine again until the kingdom of God has come. He took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to disciples, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took another cup of wine and said, This cup is the new covenant, covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood, which is poured out as a sacrifice for you. But here at this table, sitting among us as a friend, is the man who will betray me, for, for it has been determined that the Son of Man must die, but will sorrow, but will sorrow await the one who betrays him. The disciples began to ask each other which of them would ever do such a thing. Then they began to argue among themselves about who would be the greatest among them. Jesus told them, In this world the kings and great men loved. It over their people, yet they are called friends of the people. But among you, among you it will be different. Those who are the greatest among you should take the lowest rank, and the leader should be like a servant. Who is more important, the one who sits at the table or the one who serves? The one who sits at the table, of course, but not here, for I am among you as one who serves. You have stayed with me in my time of trial, and just as my Father has granted me a kingdom, I now grant you the right to eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and you will sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Jesus predicted Peter's denial. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to shift each of you like wheat, but I have pleased, pleaded in prayer for you, Simon, that your faith should not fail. So when you have repented and turned to me again, strengthen your brothers. Peter said, Lord, I am ready to go to prison with you and even to die with you. But Jesus said, Peter, let me tell you something. Before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will deny three times that you even know me. Then Jesus asked them, when I sent you out to preach the good news and you didn't have money, a traveler's bag, or an extra pair of sandals, did you need anything? No, they replied. But now, you said, take your money and the traveler's bag. And if you don't have a sword, sell your clock and buy one. For the time has come for this prophecy about me to be fulfilled. It was counted among the levels. Yes, everything written about me by the prophets would come true. Look, Lord, they replied, we have two swords among us. That's enough, he said. Jesus prays on the Mount of Olive. Then a crypt. Accompanied, accompanied by the disciples, Jesus left the upstairs room and went as usual to Mount of Olives. There he told them, Pray, then you will not give in to temptation. He walked away about a stone throw, the knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, please take this cup of suffering away from me. 
Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Then an angel from heaven appeared and strengthened him. He prayed more fervently, and he was in such glow, a g n o y of spirit that his sweat fell to the ground like great drops of blood. At last he stood up again and returned to the disciples, only to find them asleep, exhausted from grief. Why are you sleeping? he asked them. Get up and pray so that you will not give in to temptation. Jesus is betrayed and arrested. But even as Jesus said this, a crowd approached, led by Judas, one of the twelve disciples. Judas walked over to Jesus to greet him with a kiss. But Jesus said, You, Judas, would you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? When the other disciples saw what was about to happen, they exclaimed, Lord, should we fight? You brought the sword? And one of them struck at the high priest's slave, slashing off his right ear. But Jesus said, No more of this. And he touched the man's ear and healed him. Then Jesus spoke to the leading priest, the captain of the temple guard, and elders who had come for him. Am I some dangerous revolutionary? He asked. Then you come with sword and clubs to arrest me? Why didn't you arrest me in the temple? I was there every day. For this is your moment, the time when the power of darkness reasons. Peter denies Jesus. So they arrested him and led him to the high priest's home. And Peter followed at the distance. The guard lit a fire in the middle of the countryyard and sat around it. And Peter joined them there. A servant girl noticed him in the firelight and began staring at him. Finally, she said, This man was one of Jesus' followers. But Peter denied that. Woman, he said, I don't even know him. After a while, someone else looked at him and said, You must be one of them. No man, I'm not, Jesus retorted. About an hour later, someone else insisted, This must be one of them because he is Galilean too. But Peter said, Man, I don't know what you are talking about. And immediately while he was still speaking, the rooster crowded. At that moment, the Lord turned and looked at Peter. Suddenly the Lord's sword flashed through Peter's mind. Before the rooster crowds, tomorrow morning you will deny three times that you even know me. And Peter left the country yard, weeping bitterly. The guards in the charge of Jesus began mocking and beating him. They blindfolded him and said, Propass it to us. Who hit you that time? And they heard all sorts of terrible insults at him. Jesus before the council. At daybreak, all the elders of the people assembled, including the leading priests and the teachers of religious law. Jesus was led before his high council. And they said, Tell us, are you the Messiah? But he replied, If I tell you, you won't believe me. And if I ask you a question, you won't answer. 
But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated in the place of power at God's right hand. They are shouted, So are you claiming to be Son of God? And he replied, You say that I am. Why do we need other witnesses? They said, We ourselves heard him say it. Amen.